right, hello, and welcome everybody to another episode of this thing I call Chosen Idea. My name is Marco, I'm a creative generalist. All that means is I've been lucky enough to get paid to do a bunch of creative stuff throughout my career. I've learned some things along the way, now it's my chance to pass those things along to you guys. Anyways, this isn't just an episode, this is episode one of season two. Yes, very exciting, at least exciting for me. Can't believe how time has flown. Time flies when uh, you're having fun, as they say. Anyways, so my intention for season one was to have a bunch of tutorials to show you guys. That never really materialized, so I thought I'd start season two with a tutorial. And we're gonna be doing this with DaVinci Resolve. Actually, Fusion within DaVinci Resolve. The reason I chose Fusion was, there isn't a lot of content out there on the interweb for the Resolve users or Fusion users. And not only that, but there's a free version out there that um, you can do most of this stuff with. And if some of my viewers are on a budget, like I am, this will be right up your alley. Now, I don't want to exclude people that use After Effects or some other compositing software, because a lot of the principles I'll be covering here can be applied to those software packages as well. What we're gonna be doing is replicating that freeze time slash cinemagraph effect that you saw there at the beginning. I was getting ready for a thing called the board meeting, which is actually a skateboard thing that happens in Toronto every year. Another year, another board meeting in Toronto. I kind of forgot that I need a microphone for this part, but uh, well, I hope it turns out okay. See you later. <laughs> Get into the tutorial. Just to get a handle on exactly what we need, let's go through that final composite again, step by step. Okay, to start at the beginning. What a genius concept, Marco. Three different camera angles, so that means two different camera moves. We've got the camera on a tripod in the middle of our space, and it doesn't move until we get all the shots we need from each of those three angles. This is our first one. We've got the one shot of me going into the bathroom. The next shot of me flying out of the bathroom. This is me just scaling on the same shot. And this isn't just for comedic effect, it actually kind of masks the fact that I screw up this match between the video and the first still frame. Yeah, it all happens really quick, so you don't notice it that badly, but you know, and I was kind of running out of time, so you know, shoot me, whatever. Okay, so we've got this little seam here between the dishwasher and the cabinet. That sort of hides where I stitch together the first and second background plate. You can kind of tell by the way it looks like someone karate chopped the countertop right here. So the idea of going through all this stuff is just so you can keep it in the back of your mind what assets we're going to be creating down the road. So yeah, we have those eggs. Now when we go to the second camera position on the tripod we're gonna need again a clean background plate then we're gonna need me pouring the milk and holding the pan now the reason we're shooting those with me in position are so we don't have to worry about matching the lighting afterwards that stream of milk is just from a free stock photo site I cut it in and then I added a displacement to it in fusion to animate it to make it look like it's pouring the fire is actually from a stock fire CD. Yes, a CD. So I bought that a long time ago. Uh, you can find that stuff online, of course. You can even find it free online. The uh, reflection in the sunglasses is the same fire, just flipped, uh, you know, duplicated, scaled down, and masked in fusion. The glow on my face was done in Photoshop. Our last camera angle is me pouring that coffee. This was included, actually I was included in the background plate for this just so I could match the first frame of the video to um, where we left off. So I didn't even shoot any stills for this thing. What I did was I shot the whole thing in 4K video so then I could go back through all those clips and then find the frames that I wanted so I could extract myself from those in Photoshop. Now, the reason I did it this way was because I wanted to keep the color the same between the sequences at the beginning at the end and all of the stills in the middle. And that way, in Resolve, I could put the same color correction over the entire project. Let me show you how I did that in Photoshop now. 
Alright, I opened up the first video clip that we're going to be cutting from. As you can see, Photoshop automatically opens it up in the workspace called Motion. And what the Motion workspace does is it gives us this timeline here at the bottom where we can scrub through our individual frames. First thing we're going to want to do is navigate to a frame that hasn't got me in it, like this one here. I'm going to go to Control A or the Apple equivalent for selecting all, like so. Make sure that the layer here is selected in the layers palette. Control C to copy and V to paste. And that gives us a new layer. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that right into its own new document from the clipboard. Let's go create and put that there. I'm going to go back to the clip. Now navigate to that frame that we need with the eggs. Whoop, right there. Okay. I'm going to go back to our layer of video, shut that one off, to our layer of video, control A, again, copy, paste, alright, now we've got, that gives us our second video, actually I'm going to put that in a new document as well, new, create clipboard, paste, and there we go. Um, actually, we probably don't need this anymore. I can just shut that out. Nope. And from here, we can actually go to our photography workspace. Um, this one here, we're actually going to use this uh, for our stitch of the clean plate in the background. So our three images side by side. And then we can start cutting this. And as you can guess, it'll be our friend the pen tool. It's a long and somewhat arduous process, but necessary. It's kind of therapeutic I find actually. I know. I'm weird. Uh, don't forget these little holes so the details can poke through. Alright, we'll go to our paths here. That selects all of me can see again I'm gonna copy that I want to put that into its own document out of the clipboard like so layers delete that background layer leaves me like this and then we can save that in our format of choice that supports transparency I'm gonna save that as a PNG actually uh, there we go. <clears throat> you can see the one that we've actually saved from before. I'll put it freeze eggs to save. Okay. And there we go. Now we just have to do that for all of them. As you can see in true cooking show fashion, I have spared you so graciously the tedium of watching me stitch together that entire background. You'll notice here that the tripod is in the reflection in the stove. I used the clone tool uh, to create this patch to cover that up. And just for the sake of, I guess, my own OCD tendencies, not to make light of anybody with OCD, that can be a serious affliction for some, uh, but I've went and dropped all these layers in here as well, just so I know everything's going to work. So all of these uh, pieces, of course, are saved out into their own files with transparency, so we can bring those into Fusion. 
Okay, now the real fun begins. We're gonna go into the Fusion page of Resolve and put all this stuff together. And then afterwards, we're gonna jump into the color page and we're gonna do a basic color correction over the whole thing. Let's go. So those of you who've seen a node tree before, this isn't gonna be scary at all. If it's your first time, well, you might not be here anymore. And if you still are, I commend you on your stick to and your can-do attitude. Anyways, none of this is scary once you understand how it works. How does it work? Well, let's go to the beginning here. Uh, the beginning being the left-hand side. We've got this node, these are all nodes by the way. We've got this node called Media In, and it's exactly what it sounds like. It's the video clip that we've started with. And at the top here, I've put all of these nodes called merge nodes. The reason I've got them here at the top is just to make things clear for you guys. Now these merge nodes continue all the way down here. And now what a merge node does is it essentially controls the way something is layered. So each one of these columns I've made at the bottom has the element that I'm actually affecting. These don't have to be columns, this is the way I just chose to organize it. Because I'm from an After Effects background, it kind of makes sense because you can kind of look at each of these columns as if they were an After Effects layer. Uh, to make things even more clear, I could have probably taken these merge nodes and labeled them with whatever element I'm affecting, like the merge for instance. If you've got it selected, you can hit F2 and then you can type in background merge. Actually it makes sense if I were to <laughs> label it merge background. By the way, every node has got these two black dots underneath it, and those two black dots are representative of the viewers at the top of the screen here. So um, if we look at which black dot is highlighted here, it's that milk stream on the left hand side. And what we're looking at here on the right hand viewer is the end result of all these nodes. Uh, you'll see here. While we're on the topic of the milk stream, let's sort of dissect what's happening to it here by looking at the nodes that come before it. Now, uh, at the top here is of course the merge node, which is what layers our milk stream, and from here you can control how it's layered. On the top right hand side here, you can see the inspector window, which can be accessed from up here. And that gives us all our blend modes like you'd find in, say, Photoshop or in After Effects. So we're just using the normal apply mode right now. If you need to scale, rotate, or flip anything, you're going to need a transform node. That's why we have a transform node on each one of these elements because we need an exact position or angle. So under the transform node, we've got this thing called a waviness node, and that's actually what's controlling the milk stream or giving it that wavy effect. It's kind of like a displacer. Here I've opened up a new resolve project, and the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is bring our media in. So naturally, we'll go to the bottom, to the button that says media. That brings us to our media page. At the top left, you'll see all our hard drives listed here. I happen to have everything in current edits, so that's where I'm going to go. Uh, footage, tutorial footage, and in here we've got these thumbnails, but they're not just thumbnails. When I roll over them, you can actually scrub through your footage, which is super cool. Makes it really handy to um, understand what's in these clips. Now to the left here, there's this uh, master here, and that's where we put our bins. Bins are like these virtual folders. They don't exist on your hard drive. They only exist in projects. And they're a really handy way of organizing all the media that you have in a particular project. Uh, these other areas down here are for other kinds of bins. Power bins, for instance, are uh, bins that you can use across different projects. Or like if you've got one clip that you happen to use in all your projects regularly, you would put them into this power bins area. Anyway, we're going to uh, put some bins into here by just right clicking. I'm going to call this one footage. I'm going to right click again. Call this one graphics. Anyway, you can add as many as you want in there. Um, I'm going to drag this clip here into footage. If the frame rate in your project preferences is different than the clip that you're dragging in, you're going to get this warning window. I would recommend that you hit change. 
because, uh, well in this case anyway, I want the project to conform to the clip rather than the other way around. Now I'm going to go to the assets here. I'm going to grab in my graphics. Definitely going to want this guy here with the eggs. It's going to be the first freeze that we use. This is our background image here, so I'm going to definitely need that. Anyway, let's just start with what we have here. I'm going to go back to the edit window down here. And then we can actually start dragging this stuff in. So I'm going to go to my footage. I'm going to pull this in first into the timeline, like so. Uh, I'm actually going to get rid of the audio in this because I don't need it. So I'm going to right click, unlink, uh, select the audio, then hit the backspace. That gets rid of our audio. I'm actually just going to trim this now just so we're working with exactly the part that I need. So I'm going to start here. B brings up the blade tool. I'm just going to cut that right there. A is the arrow tool if you want to select things. It gives you this arrow. Now that I've got that selected, I can hit the delete key. Not the backspace key, but the delete key. Because what the, what the delete key does is actually shift everything back. So there you go. Now we can scrub through to this point here. I'm going to hit the B again for the blade tool. Cut it right there. There are other shortcuts to make this even faster, but I just want to take you through the basics. I hit A for arrow. I've selected this now and I'm going to hit the delete key again or backspace. All right, and there you go. We've got this clip. Now we're ready to actually jump into the fusion tab. With that clip selected, just navigate down here. If we start with selecting our media in, we've got these uh, buttons I was telling you about earlier which control our views. So right now, um, they're both the same. With media in selected, now we're going to add a node. What kind of node are we going to add? We're going to add the merge node because we want to actually uh, put our background in now. So we're going to hit control spacebar. That brings up our list of nodes that we can use. And uh, to quickly go to it, like we see right here, we've got the merge selected. But if I had something else here like this, I could just type in M-E-R and quickly get to the merge. We don't want a 3D merge. Uh, 3D merge does the same sort of thing, but that's when you're using things like 3D cameras. We don't need one in this. Uh, we're keeping it simple. Add. In our merge, you can see in this inspector, we've got all our controls. And we're going to navigate to graphics over here. And we're going to drag in our background. Now to connect these two, I'm going to right click, drag over top of the merge, let go, and then it's going to give us an option where we want to put that in our layers. And I'm going to make sure it is where it is in the background, like so, because the background is, uh, well, the background. So I'm going to rename this to do that. You just select the node, hit F2. These two broke, we're just going to reconnect those by going like that, just a drag and drop. The way our right hand viewer is displaying right now is a little bit annoying because it's giving us the entire background strip that we created. Uh, if we want to frame that to look like it's going to look, we can actually add a node in here called crop. So I'm going to select merge, hit the control spacebar again, crop. Add that in and then it automatically um, frames it up for us. All right, another problem obviously is that we're not in position here. We're going to actually grab these and move them over. I'm gonna stick another node in here. Now to move things around, right, like I had mentioned before, we need a transform node. 
So I'm gonna hit a control space here again and do a trans. This merge node that um, controls our background, I'm going to back off the opacity a little bit here, as you can see. Then I'm going to go back to our transform and use it to shift, shift these. I'm just gonna shift that over to line up on the right. Now we actually have to shift our background over as well. Actually, I'm gonna need a node after this one. Transform, add. Shift this guy over. They should line up pretty well if we just keep everything to the right. Now, if I go back to the merge and I bring our blend back up, Yep, you can see we got a pretty nice match there. Now that we've got everything aligned, you're probably wondering how we're gonna move this whole thing over as a unit or animate it over to the right without everything misaligning again. Well, think about this whole thing, this node tree as a hierarchy. Anything that you put further down in the hierarchy is gonna control everything before it. So if I added a transform node, for instance, between this merge and this crop, it's gonna move all of this stuff as one unit. Now, we don't wanna put it between the crop and the media out here, because what that would essentially do is move our crop out of alignment as well. So we're gonna to wanna to put a transform between the merge and the crop. I'm not gonna hit control spacebar this time. There's another way to add the most commonly used nodes. They're actually put over here. So if I roll over these, you can see we've got this little helper showing us what these are. So I'm gonna click transform and there you go, we've got another transform node. So best practices would dictate that I name all these nodes because if you get a project that starts getting really big, it's nice to just look at these nodes and know what they are. We're not gonna use our new transform node to move anything yet because as you might recall, our background image isn't exactly going to match our video image on the left hand side because of the stitch that we had to do with that second camera position. So what we should do now is move all these nodes over a little bit. Uh, actually, we're gonna wanna do this. Because we're gonna wanna put another merge node between these two to add our cutout. So let's control, merge, add the cutouts in here, like so. And uh, again, we're gonna right click, I'm gonna drag over top of that. And we're gonna wanna put it in the foreground this time. You can see over here in the viewer, I'm way over on the right hand side. So what do we do to move things over? Another transform node. So, control space, transform, add that in there, and then we're gonna use that just to scooch it on over like this. See how easy everything is? What are those After Effects people talking about? Nodes are so difficult and complicated. Let's uh, zoom in a little bit here. Middle mouse over, and Going to line that up. Again, we can go to our merge node and use the blend control to give us some transparency so we can line these up properly. So jumping ahead a little bit here, you can see that I've zoomed out a little and if we scrub through this and keep an eye on our right hand viewer there, you'll see the problems with the, the background. So we're gonna do something to sort of uh, hide that a little bit. First, we're gonna jump back into our media page just to drag a few of these pieces in, or a few more of these pieces in. I'm gonna go to the graphics here, back to current edits, me pouring the milk, firing the pan. 
If you see it displaying weird that way, that's, well, in my case, I've got uh, PNGs in here, and Resolve has a little bit of a problem displaying these. There are these artifacts in the background. Don't worry about those. You, maybe you didn't even use PNGs. Maybe you're using something else that supports transparency. Uh, but PNG seems to work out this way. There are other issues with PNGs as well, but not to worry. They don't look like this in your project, so I'm going to drag the milk in here, too. There is actually some other footage uh, we're gonna bring in. We're gonna bring in that fire. The fire is actually a TIFF sequence. And you can see that sequences actually show up as a video clip. So I'm gonna drag that in there. Okay, let's hop back into Fusion. I'm gonna go into Graphics. I'm gonna drag me in pouring that milk. You know? Just like at the grocery store, always forgetting the eggs. I should have brought those eggs in as well. Anyway, so where are we going to want me pouring the milk to come in within our sequence here? We want it to come in below this graphic of me frozen with the eggs and um, on top of the background. So that's somewhere between these two merge nodes. So we're going to have to shift things over again like we have done many a time before. That merge again. Another merge node. Our friend, the merge node. We'll bring in our, okay, right click, drag over top, let go. That's it, it's gonna be on the foreground between these two. And then another transform node, of course. See, are you getting the hang of this yet? I think you are. It's getting monotonous, actually. We'll uh, move this guy, move this guy over. Let's actually start animating this a little bit. All right, click on our transform node. We're gonna wanna set keys for the center, the size, and the angle right there. Uh, let's name some of these so we don't get confused. Hit F2. If you add a space in here, by the way, like if I did that and I went OK, you'll notice down here that Resolve actually gets rid of that space between the words. So if you really need like a gap between words, uh, you know, put uh, an underscore in there or something like that. And then this is going to be our freeze milk. All right, so that makes it simple, right? Background, freeze milk, freeze eggs. We're gonna set a keyframe where we are now. Now I'm gonna move the whole thing over. First, I'm going to shift our time to say frame 800, and then I'm going to grab the center. Now you can just left click, drag in one of these windows. I'm gonna bring this all the way over to the very end. So we're gonna make everything happen between um, 658 and 800. The After Effects users out there are gonna find this familiar. You can see we've got these little arrows on both sides of our keyframe button that let us jump between keyframes without having to scrub. This comes in really handy when your resources start to tank, your system resources start to tank, like when your file gets really heavy, your project gets really heavy, and it becomes difficult to scrub through. You can just jump from key to key using the, uh, the arrows. So if we're at, uh, we're pretty good right now, so from 800, we can use the playhead and scrub back. Pretty cool, eh? how we've animated that so far. Okay, you can see right there that I've still got the transparency on the cutout from when I was lining things up earlier. Uh, I can go in and um, fix that right now if I want. I'm just going to that merge node. Let's go one on that. By the way, another way to make something uh, visible in one of these viewers up here is to just drag it into one of the viewers. Uh, cool, huh? See, that 
that goes. Let's uh, put it where it makes sense. Now, the reason I've done these like this is because I want to manually show you how to connect these without doing the right click drag. When I mean right click drag, I mean this thing where you get the dialog that comes up. See, once you get comfortable with these and you know where what goes to what arrow, you're not going to need to do that anymore. You can just use one of these squares and drag it, like in this case, over the um, green triangle. And then over here we know this one goes to the yellow triangle. So it's the same thing essentially. Uh, we're going to notice that here in the timeline uh, our milk stream isn't actually showing up. It's either off screen or it's not in the same place on the timeline. To check whether it's there but out of frame Roll this over a little bit here. Well, that was the case. It was just outside the frame. That's not where <laughs> I'm gonna leave it, obviously. Let's move forward a little bit in time. I'm gonna stick myself pouring the milk, so I'm gonna go to this transform node here. I'm gonna put myself pouring the milk into position. I want myself right about there. Don't worry about the feet uh, not lining up with the floor because what I'm doing, at least in my project, I'm gonna zoom in so you're not gonna see the feet anyways. And I really don't want myself any lower because I kind of like where I am. Um, I'll go back to the milk again. Let's uh, move that over. I'm gonna move up like this. On that, I'm gonna middle mouse over as usual and just fit this into position here. Maybe a little bit smaller, so I'm gonna just take the size down a little bit here. Uh, it's probably, probably close enough for us. So my mouse ran out of juice halfway through that, so I kind of took that as a sign to uh, take a break. I, I went ahead actually and added the uh, the waviness node to the uh, that stream of milk. Um, I'm gonna just scrub forward here in time again to right about here, and I'm gonna also bring in myself with that pan and the fire. So I've jumped forward a little bit again here just to do some cleanup and naming of nodes. You'll notice that the fire, when we select the transform node and and move it over here, you don't actually see it appear anywhere. And usually it's because wherever you have this playhead doesn't necessarily line up with where the footage is in the timeline. To go into a window where we can actually see if that's the case, we just have to go to keyframes up here at the right, top right. I'm going to close the inspector. You can see the benefit of naming these nodes because we can see them all here on the left hand side. And we can see indeed our fire is not lining up with our playhead. Actually I'm going to go back to the inspector. I'm going to loop the fire actually. So there's a, in the inspector there are the controls for the fire. So I've got the fire selected and I'm going to click on loop. And I go back to our timeline here. There shouldn't be a problem moving that into position so I can actually see it. It's a little bit small. So I want this to look really crazy. So we need a little bit more size, definitely. Now in the merge note, I'm gonna switch that to screen. I had a glow on this as well in my original. Um, there's no reason you can't do that as well. Uh, we can stick one in between here. Glow. Add that in there. We don't have to go too crazy, but it does add something. Now there's going to be a bit of an issue here because we're going to animate me going across this frame and uh, the fire isn't going to follow unless we actually put everything in here. Uh, I'm not going to actually bother with that. I'm just going to keyframe it along with it. So you'll see that everything moves together now, but as soon as I put myself somewhere else within that, it's not going to line up anymore. So let's address something here at the beginning that we haven't done anything with yet. We need to get this freeze frame of me holding the eggs 
to start exactly on the last frame of the video that's running behind it. You already know the tool for doing this because I showed you uh, when we jump into the keyframes here for the fire. Our freeze eggs are right here. Again, naming comes in handy. And we're gonna wanna grab the end of that and we're gonna wanna tuck it in. You'll see how the transform comes along with it because they're all part of the same hierarchy. So you can see right there, we want 160 to be where I come in, exactly where I come in. So you'll notice now when I scrub the next frame, we've got the fridge door closed and my uh, background comes in. Excellent, we're making some progress. Oh my God, look at this. I've got the fire right in my face. That's not too pleasant. Let's bring those eggs in actually while we're at it. Bring those eggs into the graphics here. I'm going to bring these two guys in right here. And um, I can actually move all of this over. We can put those over top of our egg carton. So these are already sort of airborne as soon as the box opens. I'm going to move over here again. I'm gonna rotate these a bit. I've got my finger over the corner of the carton here, so I suppose the eggs wouldn't necessarily fly out of that area. It looks like those two are empty. I know those two are empty because this entire carton was empty. I actually threw those eggs in there in Photoshop afterwards. I'm gonna put that right there. I was gonna put a keyframe on the eggs, but I really shouldn't until Everything's exactly the way I want. Uh, the size, I'm gonna actually bring those down a little bit because I want to animate the size over time as if they're coming toward the camera. And uh, I might actually put a blur on those as well as they're getting closer and closer to the camera. As we move forward, put a keyframe on the size, keyframe on the position, and keyframe on the angle. And then I'm gonna go to where we were at, what, 770? Nope, that was too far. Back up, right there. I'm gonna move these over here like this. And I'm gonna scale those up. Okay, bring them back over here like that. I'm gonna add that blur to those as well. So I've got the eggs node selected. Just gonna go in here. Oop, blur. All right. And then um, at 660, the blur is going to be, let's put a keyframe on the blur there now. And then we're going to head forward to the next keyframe and back to the blur. We head, we move forward to the next keyframe uh, in our transform, right? Because that's where we place our keyframe. And I'm going to use that same position, uh, frame uh, 735, to also increase that blur size. You can see our eggs getting much blurrier now. So now when I back up. So you just have to do the same thing for the single egg as well. Oh, you can see there we've got a bit of a problem because the eggs, again, they appear before we want them to. We can go to frame 660 here. We'll jump back into our keyframes. We'll look for the eggs, which we have conveniently labeled eggs. Gonna grab the end of that again and just tuck that in here. So they're appearing right on that frame. Let's just quickly go ahead and add that fire into the sunglasses as well. 
I'm gonna move these guys over. Just gonna grab all of these. Copy them over here. Add another merge in here. Okay. And then link this in here. Alright. Now what is going on here? This is just a copy. Uh, we're running into some issues with the way this is displaying. Uh, because this merge node is normal, we want to make that screen as well like we had done before with this prior merge node for the fire. And we're going to want to flip this now um, because it's actually in the glasses it would be the other way around. So I'm flipping that right now and I'm going to Move that over. Aha! I gotta get this over top of myself here. Uh, I put this in the wrong place, so let's disconnect these actually. Move these guys this way. Put these together again. And now we're actually going to want this in here, so, like so, well, that was almost, uh, there we go. All right, that's more like it. Now my face is really burning up. We're going to size this down much smaller. Let's bring it. We just want to get some of that fire over the glasses, right? Like that. So that's not going to work very well. We're going to actually have to mask that out. And that's why I took you through doing this. Because I have to show you the poly tool. Which is perfect for masking stuff like this. So I'm going to... It's a node, of course. Poly. I'm going to add that in and then add it. It automatically adds this to a mask channel that's built into everything. And up here you'll see we've got a pen tool. I'm going to zoom in on this whole thing first. So jump to 100%. Middle mouse over top of this. And now with this pen tool selected, I'm just going to draw a path around the lens in these glasses. Pretty cool, huh? We'll go into the merge and we're going to just back off on the opacity a little bit. If we go back into the poly tool, we can actually soften the edges here, like that. If you want to get into real details, you can um, also do this within the, the other lens as well. I'm not going to bother with that. You can also use this to rotoscope as well, because this poly tool respects frame so whenever you modify this pen tool path um, you are actually creating uh, keyframes in time so now when we um, scrub through you should be able to see the fire appearing in the glasses because we've copied it over from our previous instance of the fire the fire coincides precisely with the fire in the glasses so whenever that fire flares up you'll see it in the glasses I am very proud of all of you who've stuck it out this far we are almost done here uh, almost done here showing you what you need to complete this thing uh, there are some details that you already know how to take care of with the stuff that we've already covered. But um, what we're going to want to do now is bring in that video that leads out of this whole sequence. 
I'm going to grab that, pull that in. I'm going to cleverly name this Coffee Pour. So I want this over top of our background, but I actually want it behind me doing this uh, fire thing with the pan. I'm gonna have to squeeze it in somewhere here. So, above our background node, our friend the merge tool, or merge node. It's a tool. And I go like that. And then we're going to have to, ah, uh, oh, we don't have to worry about the transform, I don't know, oh, we'll put one in in case, I guess. We're going to have to move over quite a bit here, okay, just going to line this up now to the left. Actually, I'm going to use the merge nodes blend again to line these up. I'm just looking to line up the background, so I'm just going to... Zoom in here. Uh, just gonna go to something in the background. Merge. Okay, I think we've got it. We can actually see that the video uh, is in position right now because the uh, tripod is visible in the oven back there. If you remember in the background image, I had retouched that out. So we are actually looking at the video and we're gonna need to mask out that right hand side. To do that, it's not going to be all that difficult actually. With the coffee pour selected, we're gonna have to add a mask to it. Like I said, you don't always have to go into the list of nodes by hitting the control space bar. You can also go into uh, these tools here. And rather than a poly tool, a regular poly tool, I'm gonna go with a, a rectangle because that's, uh, that's what we need. You can see that it's immediately masking this out. I'm gonna drag this down here just so it's sort of out of the way. And um, this rectangle tool has all the same controls as the poly tool, it's just a rectangle. What we wanna do is, you can see the tripod disappearing in the background as I move it over. We're just gonna wanna divide the frame right about here. So before we wrap up and I show you what we're gonna do in the deliver page, we wanna get those zoom in and zoom outs that we do, or the virtual zoom in and zoom out we do with the scaling. And we do that scaling through this transform node that we've got at the end of our hierarchy. Um, being at the end of our hierarchy means that it controls everything before it just like when we panned everything over to the left. In here, we're gonna want to um, add keyframes for our center position and our size. That'd be right at this frame here before I want the camera to zoom in on me. And then I have to scrub forward in time to where I want the camera on me, so that would be right about there. I'm going to increase that scale. I'm going to move myself over here. Whoop, way, way too far. What are you doing? Okay, right there. And up. Okay, a little tighter. A little tighter. And further over. Ah, let's put in a nicer number than that. 3.5, we'll say. And, uh,. So you sort of get the idea how to do your zoom in and your zoom outs, but there's one more thing before we head to the deliver page. And you'll notice that in my original project that I showed you, that I had this thing called the erode dilate node. And the reason that I had that in there was because um, sometimes you'll find little edges around things that you've cut out, especially if you've used PNGs like I did. With my pan cutout selected here, I'm going to actually add that erode um, node to show you what that looks like. Erode dilate, there we go. And um, you can actually you just use this to sort of choke in on the, on the edges here. I'm going to use, I think it was linear that I used. 
Yeah, linear, all right. You can see how it softens the, uh, the edges, so this is super handy. Some of you with some Fusion familiarity with the standalone product know that there's Fusion people who will add their color corrections within Fusion. But since we've got our own dedicated color page, that's where I like to put my color corrections and my color grades on uh, when working in Resolve. So once I've got something that I'm sort of happy with, I'll select my clip and I'll go to the color page. And in the color page, I like to work with my RGB parade. Here you can get your various scopes. I like using the parade. And now while I'm watching these and my clip is selected, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take down my lift. We uh, can see in my scope there, I want to bring that to the bottom. So I'm bringing the blacks in. And then normally I'll just go to the gain and I'll want to make sure that I'm not clipping any of my highlights at the top. Now this is a very basic correction I'm doing. Saturation wise, I'm not too disappointed with what I've got there. I'll probably bring it up to about 60 though. Okay, maybe it's, maybe I don't want to do this with this clip here. Go to 55, all right. In the deliver page, we've got this area called the render queue, and that's where, of course, all our jobs ready for rendering are. And at the top left are all our settings that we want to use for outputting our given project. One thing you sort of have to pay attention to here is this little thing here, which you can actually make a mistake with if it's not at the end of your project. If you've got this somewhere in here, it's actually only going to output your project up until this point. So this is kind of a way of trimming your project after everything is done. I wouldn't recommend that you use this as a tool for trimming projects, but if there's just a specific area of a project that you want to render out, this is kind of a handy way to do it. So um, here we can put our file name in. We can call it uh, test project. And here we can browse to a location, save. Um, now scrolling down, uh, here are all our output options. That all looks good. Audio options, export audio, okay, great. Now we can just click on add to render queue and it comes up here on the right. And then we're ready to start rendering. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did making it. I do actually have a lot of fun making these. Uh, please hit that like button. If you'd like to receive notifications of whenever I post these things, um, I'd love for you to subscribe. Until then, keep working to make your chosen idea a reality. Peace.